what I so what I would uh, like to explain is uh, uh, how this circle action uh, leads to uh, uh, this curve that uh, Fark and von Sinn has uh, constructed in a, a Piatic Hodge theory. So, uh, so, so if we have a curve x uh, and uh, a point on the curve, so I will call the point infinity. So we should think that x is a is a complete curve, and uh, in a second I will uh, take x to be uh, just the projective line. So then we have the inclusion of the of the the complement of this point. Which which is is open, uh, but Grothendieck has told us that we should think of the formal completion of X along uh, infinity uh, as a tubular neighborhood of of the point. So we don't have two tubular neighborhoods in in algebraic geometry, but the formal completion behaves as if it was a a, 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 a tubular neighborhood. In particular, this map here behaves as if it is an open inclusion and an affine map. And uh, then this thing here, which is actually open, now behaves as if it's closed because uh, it's, we can think that there's not much difference between this and x, uh, but not y instead. And then here's, here's uh, this. Uh, punctured uh, formal completion. And uh, this philosophy is, uh, is uh, substantiated in uh, this recolmon between uh, the stable infinity categories of, uh, of quasi coherent sheaves. Uh, so we have the quasi coherent sheaves on X the quasi-coherence sheaves on, on this tubular neighborhood and the quasi-coherence sheaves on the complements. And this behaves as if it's, it's a closed inclusion and this behaves as if it's an open inclusion. Also this function, uh, this push forward here from uh, the formal completion is uh, T exact, which it should be if it is affine. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> So now uh, on this curve, we have these, uh, so we have the structure sheaf, and then we have this uh, Sear twist, which uh, we can think of as functions with a, a simple zero at infinity. And we have its uh, dual, which we can think of as meromorphic functions with a simple pole at infinity. And uh, then, the way we get uh, the curve is that the curve is proids of this graded ring, which uh, we uh, get by taking uh, global sections of all these uh, sear twists uh, of uh, the structure sheaf. Okay, so uh, so how does this look in the case of P1? Uh, so let X be P1 and let T be a coordinate around this uh, chosen point. Uh, so then if we calculate, uh, yeah, so now we move this sheaf uh, to, to these three pieces and uh, there we can calculate the sections uh, at this complement, we get uh, a polynomial algebra on C inverse, uh, at the punctured formal neighborhood, we get uh, a, Laurent, a Laurent series ring in T. And then here, we really get a, a power series ring, but the way it includes here depends on N. So it includes as uh, this sub uh, K double bracket T module, which is uh, generated by uh, t to the minus n. And then we can calculate uh, the global sections. That's the limit of this diagram. So it's 
the part here and here that meets here and h1 is the co-limit so it's the parts in here that uh, are not hit by these two maps so to speak okay so so what does that look like <coughs> uh, if n is is positive so then we have global sections namely uh, we have this k vector space, which is generated by one t inverse and down to t to the minus n. So this is, think of these as, as meromorphic functions that uh, have a pole of depth n at uh, infinity. And there's no h1. And if, it's, if n is negative, then there are no global sections. And instead there's an h1, which is uh, this, uh, uh, k vector space here. Uh, note that if n is minus one, then this goes from t to one. So in fact, that that means zero. So uh, so when n is minus one, both h zero and h one are zero. Uh, okay, and then. Here is uh, now what P1 is. P1 is Preutz of this graded ring. Uh, of course, we can write this graded ring in many different ways. So here I have made this non-canonical choice of uh, a coordinate in, at infinity, and then it takes this form. This is, of course, a canonical way of writing it. Uh, and but but now to calculate that group, I, I made this choice. Okay, so now next I want to explain how these uh, uh, terms here appear from spectra with a trivial circle action. So, what is a spectrum with a with a trivial circle action? So a spectrum is uh, a point in the infinity category of spectra. So it's a map from uh, the point, which I call one, and then to spectra. And uh, now how does such a spectrum determine, yeah, what is a spectrum with a circle action or with a G action in general? It's a map from the classifying space BG to the infinity category of spectra. And to say that the action is trivial means that it factors like this, that it factors through the projection that collapses the whole uh, classifying space to a point and then maps everything to that point. Okay, so, uh, so now I write P over star E for this composition here. So let me write that here. So this composition here is P of a star E. So this is just the spectrum E considered as a spectrum with trivial circle action. Uh, so now we can take the fixed points or the homotopy fixed points of that spectrum with circle action, and we can take the Tate spectrum. Uh, yeah. When we get to cyclic homology, this will correspond to negative cyclic homology, and this will correspond to periodic cyclic homology. Uh, so whenever we have a spectrum with circle X and we have spectral sequences, uh, which look like this. So, uh, yeah, maybe it's easier to look at this picture. So, uh, here on the fiber, sorry, here on the baseline, we have the, on this side here, we have the cohomology of uh, the classifying space of the circle, which is P infinity C. Uh, and if we look at the homotopy fixed point spectral sequence, then we don't have this side here. So we just have this side. And now each of these lines is then, uh, a copy of uh, the homotopy groups of the spectrum E. And 
what sits in degree zero is what is along this diagonal uh, line here. Uh, yeah, and then the Tate is is made by uh, inverting this uh, this element V, so that that it becomes periodic. Uh, yeah. Let's look at the exomorphism in this spectral sequence. Uh, so this is the forgetful or the inclusion of the fixed points in everything. Uh, so what does that mean? So we have this diagram here. We have the classifying space of the circle. We have a point and we have spectra. And now I just choose some point in the classifying space of the circle. So I just choose a section S of, of the canonical projection. And uh, then I can restrict along that. And uh, that gives a map. And that is the, uh, that induces the uh, it's homomorphism in the spectral sequence. But now, since the uh, since the circle action is uh, trivial, that has the consequence that uh, the isomorphism uh, has a section, because uh, let me see, maybe I can do it like this. No. Yeah. So because we can also restrict uh, along p, and that gives a map from. Uh, from E back to the fixed points. And because is composed with P is the identity, uh, this becomes a section of, uh, of the H homomorphism. Okay. Well, this means that if, uh, if E is multiplicative, then the spectral sequences uh, are spectral sequences of pi star E algebras. So all differentials have to vanish uh, on uh, elements that are pi star E uh, times, uh, times the element one. Uh, if E is complex orientable, which is the situation that we will be interested in, so, for example, if, if the homotopy groups of E are concentrated in even degrees, so then there are no spectral sequences, uh, uh, then there are no differentials uh, in the spectral sequence at all. And uh, in that case, uh, we can therefore identify this uh, with this. Uh, yeah, so let's see. So, <clears throat> So E2 was this polynomial algebra. Uh, now this is also E infinity. Uh, and then we can, that, that it's complex orientable means that we can choose that there exists a homotopy class, which I call V tilde, which restricts to this uh, element V in, in the spectral sequence. So we can lift this uh, generator to, to an actual homotopy class. Uh, and now this, the spectral sequence also gives a descending filtration on these homotopy groups. And so the answer is that uh, we get the completion of this polynomial algebra with respect to that uh, filtration. So, so if we have, uh, so if we have an, an element T here and T squared and T cubed, then, uh, then this will mean that, uh, that, that, that these homotopy groups, pi star, P star, E, homotopy fixed points uh, become, uh, well, if, if E is periodic, then, then this becomes a, a power series ring. So we see that power series, that the power series ring comes out of this picture. So, but the important thing is that, that this here is a pi star E algebra to begin with. 
if it's not a pi star E algebra, we cannot say that it's a power series algebra because it has to be an algebra before it can be a power series algebra. Okay, uh, yeah. This filtration here uh, corresponds to uh, what in Pierre de Koch's theory is called the Nygaard filtration. So uh, uh, this name is now also used in, uh, in topology. So I will call it the Nygaard filtration. As you know, uh, Quillen used uh, this, this, this power series description here in a very effective way. So uh, if we have a complex orientable cohomology theory, it has an associated formal group. And uh, this is uh, very useful to analyze uh, all kinds of things. And uh, so I will get back to what that corresponds to uh, in, the, in the case of, of Hochschild homology. So, so now to Hochschild homology. So, so the big difference, which is this fantastic discovery uh, uh, that Kahn and, and Segan made in the uh, 80s is that uh, it has a circle action, which is not trivial. So, uh, well, now I put a T here for topological Hochschild homology, but it has nothing to do with, to with the top. This is, uh, uh, th there's no distinction here between Hochschild homology and topological Hochschild homology. In any case, uh, if we have a ring R, then uh, Hochschild homology or topological Hochschild homology is uh, a spectrum with a circle action. And now this does not factor through the point. It's not a trivial action. Uh, we still have spectral sequences. And uh, now I have written TC minus instead of the homotopy fixed points because this is this is what negative cyclic homology is. And instead of Tate, I have written uh, TP, this is periodic cyclic homology. And uh, now the picture looks like this, as uh, the same picture as before. We have this polynomial or Laurent algebra here in degree zero. And then each of these vertical lines is a copy of uh, Hochschild homology or topological Hochschild homology. Uh, but now because the circle action is non-trivial, there can be differentials from, from this line. And uh, in fact, the D2 differential is uh, cons uh, B operator. So we see the non-trivial, the non-triviality of the circle action uh, as uh, manifesting in itself in, in, in the B operator. Well, uh, this means that uh, now these are not, okay, we again have this edge homomorphism from on, on pi zero, we have, we have Tc minus zero is this whole line and Th8 zero is this top quotient here. Uh, so we have the projection onto this top quotient. Right? But now that does not have a section. So Tc, if R is commutative, then pi naught here is R. But now this is not an R algebra. It's only a ring. It's not an R algebra. Uh, so I think my, my biggest uh, contribution uh, in mathematics is that I have I identified what this ring is uh, if R is perfectoid. Uh, so I only did it in the case uh, of the unit disk in the periodic complex plane. And then uh, Bartmore and Schultze uh, proved that the same thing is true for any uh, perfectoid ring. Uh, I should also say that uh, the that this calculation 
the starting point for 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 all of these things is uh, is uh, is Bergstedt's period periodicity theorem. Which says that T eight eight uh, of if p uh, is a polynomial algebra uh, on a generator of degree two. Uh, so, yeah, this is not the bot element. It's it's this Bergsted element, and uh, yeah. So this is this, this is a very the important theorem and uh, unlike bot periodicity we do not have many proofs of it as far as i know uh, and uh, i hope that uh, we will find new proofs and uh, uh, actually uh, but was speaking at the conference for illusi and he said that there's now a new proof so uh, i look forward to uh, to hearing what that proof is. So all proofs so far has used uh, the action of uh, the dialect of algebra on the dual Steenard algebra, uh, which is a, a non-trivial calculation. And uh, it would be nice to find a proof that doesn't use that. Uh, at any rate, this is the starting point of this uh, calculation. So, so here, instead of, so this is not a, a, a polynomial algebra. So, sorry, this is not a power series algebra. In fact, it's not even an R algebra. But, uh, but it has a, a filtration, namely this filtration coming from the spectral sequence and all the filtration quotients are canonically isomorphic to R, just as uh, is the case in of the T-adic filtration of the power series uh, ring. But the way they glue together is different. So uh, instead, we get this ring here, which is uh, Fontaine's uh, ring uh, A-inf. And uh, yeah, that's a, that's a fantastic ring. And uh, this is sort of the starting point for uh, this ring is very rigid. And in order to uh, get a p-adic geometry that works like com complex geometry, you have to make it larger. And uh, so this is what we what what the Fock-Fontaine curve. Uh, is a product of. Okay, so now let me say something about the Fock Fontaine curve. So, given an algebraically closed field of characteristic P, uh, there's this uh, curve, uh, the Fock Fontaine curve, it's a curve over, over spec QP. And the closed points on this uh, curve parameterizes uh, on twists, so, sorry, on tilts uh, of if. So it parameterizes algebraically closed fields of characteristic zero such that their tilt is if. And uh, if you don't know what that means, then uh, Look at some of Schultz's papers, uh, but it's not so important uh, for for this talk. What we can what we can think of is that in if p is equal to zero, and uh, somehow there are many different ways to there are many different incarnations of p, and and this curve parameterizes these uh, incarnations. Yeah. <clears throat> so, yeah. If we compare this to, to P1, 
then on, on P1, we had this formal variable T, but on the Fock von Tinn curve, it's the prime number P that is the variable. So, uh, so there's not just one P, but it, there's many, many different P's and, and they correspond to the points on this curve. Okay, and now to understand it, we do the same thing as before. Uh, we pick a point, so we pick a an algebraically closed field of characteristic zero, uh, whose on tilt, no, whose tilt is uh, is f. Actually, we should also choose this isomorphism, and uh, we should identify isomorphisms that differ, or that. We should identi identify two isomorphisms if they differ by a power of the Frobenius on F. Uh, Lars, uh, sorry to interrupt you, but uh, yeah. I, I got confused when you said that there were several P. Uh, yeah. Don't you fix the characteristic once and for all? Yeah, no, I mean, this is not uh, P. No, no, there's only one P, but... Uh, But we should but we should think of p as being the variable and in the same way as in the power series ring you you can choose many or on p1 you can choose many different coordinates in the same way there are many incarnations of the prime number p uh -huh, okay and that's what this uh, curve parameterizes okay fine so okay so i got confused sorry yeah yeah so there's only one p it's a uh, uh, they're not there's only one prime prime number they're not two prime numbers they 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 are all this the same p but they're not quite the same anyway okay so uh, now to to analyze this curve we should we should calculate the global sections of the sear twists of the uh, of the structure sheet and uh, in the case of P1, this, this looked like this, and, uh, but now it looks like this instead. So, uh, so the, the Laurent power, the Laurent, the, the ring of a Laurent series is replaced by this ring called uh, B. Deron, Fontaine's B. Deron. It's a a discrete valuation field, so it's a field with a discrete valuation, and fill zero B the wrong is its valuation ring. Uh, and then there's uh, this other ring here called B E, uh, which uh, let me put these up so you can you can compare them. So so B E plays the role of this polynomial ring in T inverse. B the wrong plays the role of the field of uh, the wrong series and fill minus M B the wrong plays the role of this uh, guy here. And if we consider the filtrations, uh, they almost look like the filtrations here. It's not true for this ring BE, and we will. See, that's an important point which we will come back to. So, how do we get this out of uh, cyclic homology? Well, uh, I should say that after this, uh, after this, uh, this theorem here, after Fontaine's ring showed up. Uh, I think Schulze was the first person from arithmetic geometry uh, who was willing to consider uh, these uh, homotopy theory methods. Uh, and then he realized that uh, things that exist in Pierre de theory do not have a, a parallel in, in, in the classical theory of topological cyclic homology. And so that led to a new and much better description uh, by uh, Nikolaus and Scholze. And uh, 
it also made it clear what the nature of uh, the Frobenius uh, that you have on topological cyclic homology as, as opposed to cyclic homology, uh, what the nature of that is. Uh, this has led to a, a huge development in the last uh, five years and uh, which has proved, which, which has where um, a lot of new uh, wonderful results have been proved. Uh, one of them is, is, is this theorem here by uh, Anzio, Matthew, Morrow, and uh, Nikolaus. And uh, I should say that the theorem is based uh, on work of uh, Clausen, Matthew, and Morrow, which uh, 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 Dustin will uh, talk about in uh, his talk on uh, Thursday. Uh, so, so, so let me say what this theorem says. If R is a commutative ring, which is Henselian along P, for example, P complete, uh, then there's a Cartesian square like this. So here, this is K theory of R, and then it's completed at P, and then P is inverted. So when I write with QP coefficients, I mean first complete at P and then invert P. Uh, here, this is CC minus completed at P and then P inverted and then Nygaard com completed. So we also, uh, after we invert P, it's no longer complete with respect to this Nygaard filtration. So uh, we complete it again. Uh, and here, whether you put a T on H here makes no difference. So we could also take uh, HC minus instead of TC minus. Uh, on this side, uh, this is the, the new uh, ingredient really in their paper, namely it's uh, a crystalline uh, churn character. So this goes from K theory of R mod P uh, with QP coefficients and then to periodic uh, cyclic homology. And uh, the theorem is that, that this square is Cartesian. Uh, this is called the Baylinson uh, fiber square because Baylinson had proved uh, a version of uh, he had proved a version of this uh, under stronger uh, assumptions. Uh, but this new technology with the uh, Nikolaus Schulze for Benius uh, makes it possible to prove it uh, in a more, much more slick way and uh, in this generality here. Okay, so now we take R to be the unit disk in this uh, field C. Uh, yeah, so C is algebraically closed and P complete. I, I think I didn't say before that it's P complete. That's uh, important. So we can take the, the unit disk and because we are in an ultrametric situation, the unit disk is a ring again. Uh, and uh, yeah, so now we get, uh, now we get these uh, rings that shows up uh, from this situation very uh, simply. So by a calculation or by a theorem of Bachmore and Scholzer, uh, we get the ring BE by taking uh, this ring here and then inverting the bot element and then taking the degree zero part. So, so we take this ring, we invert the bot element, and then we take the part in that graded ring, which sits in degree zero, and that ring is uh, Fontaine's ring BE. Uh, and uh, by the way, this, this, this ring is a PID, which was uh, a starting point for uh, Fark and Fontaine's uh, discovery of the curve that, that, that this ring uh, is a PID just like the polynomial ring is a PID. 
And now these uh, other parts uh, are derived in the same way, take periodic cyclic homology, Nygaard completed, invert the bot element and take the degree zero part. Then this is the ring B, the run. And uh, if we, so to get the fill zero part, this is also called uh, B the run plus. So we take uh, CC minus, complete at P, invert P, Nygaard complete, invert the bot element and take the degree zero part. So, uh, so this uh, geometry here uh, of, of the fact from the curve with this choice of point uh, is reflected uh, in this uh, square here, uh, where R is OC. So, so let me point out now a big difference between this and uh, P1. So we got P1 in more or less the same way uh, by considering a complex orientable cohomology theories with trivial circle action. And uh, so if we have P1 over K, then its double sections is K. Uh, but here's a big difference, namely, uh, well, this K is also the, the, the residue field at, at infinity. Here the re on the, at the fact from 10 curve, the, the residue field at the point infinity is this huge field C. But now because of this non-triviality of the circle action, the global sections is, is just QP. So uh, it's, it's the fact that the circle action is trivial that cuts down uh, this uh, group of global sections from being this uh, enormous field to just being the field uh, QP. And uh, yeah, this has, uh, fantastic consequences. So uh, Fark and Scholze has now this used this in their geometrization of the local Langlands correspondence, where again, when you look at uh, the moduli stack of uh, G bundles on the Fark von Zinn curve, uh, it's, its global sections uh, is the QP points in the group G and not uh, the C points, which which you might otherwise think. So, uh, yeah. So I think that was actually everything I have to say. So I think we are back on schedule. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing, Lars. <laughs> okay. Well, okay. Thank, let's thank uh, Lars for a really great talk. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Lars. Yeah, so I'm sure there are plenty of uh, questions, and uh, so Sorry, I, I want I want to ask Lars one thing, if I understand well, the fact that you have uh, at the end a QP, uh, it's uh, due to the fact that uh, there is a universal perfection, and then the vector. So then, uh, then you sort of uh, uh, get uh, uh, rather than the bottom uh, structure you get already through the bit uh, something like uh, deformation so that's the role of qp there well it's actually because of this uh, the delicacy of this map here uh, so uh, <clears throat> so so of course this C does not disappear. So it, it goes somewhere else. And uh, what happens is that, uh, so for P1, uh, O of minus one has trivial uh, H1. 